And I think, well, first of all, um, Europe should um, try to um, make true on the ambition of the present, uh, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, who wants the EU to be a geopolitical player. She wants to lead a geopolitical commission. And that means this making full use of, well, the strong points the EU has also in the relations with China. It's a big market, which the Chinese would like to enter uh, with um, its own norms, standards and practices, which are partly not the same as China's. But if China wants to get to our market, um, then uh, we should be, they can only do so on, um, on the basis of our norms and standards. Uh, so we have a, we are not negotiating from a weak position. Um, the only problem for the EU is that it is very often divided in, internally. So I think this ambition can only be realized if uh, if all the European states are are on the same page, um, and preferably we should also work out together with the U.S. a transatlantic agenda uh, for, well, pushing back on some of these things China is doing. But unfortunately, there, the present administration uh, very much um, uh, wants to do it. Uh, well, it's America first, it's America alone, and not really, really taking care of the interests or of the opinions of its allies. Uh, a number of points, we, we are fully on the same line as the U.S. I mean, this is not a, a level playing field which China is proposing. Um, they are also, uh, well, putting out a lot of disinformation now. Um, they are uh, trying to, um, to rebuild a number of international organizations, uh, multilateral organizations, in their own image and according to their own ideas. And we should give pushback and preferably together. But that's not the line as I see it from, from the, the Trump administration. There is no leadership from the U.S. coming on this point. Um, so, in fact, what Europe is doing there is, a, is partly a kind of holding operation. Till, and we all hope and pray then that a new administration will come in and they will also push back on China. But maybe there will be more opportunity to do this together. Um, and then what uh, a notion which is very often coming up in the discussions now is that um, a lot of people are thinking that China will be the big winner of this pandemia. They are the first out coming out of this. Um, they are be able to they are able to project their narrative uh, more strongly. Um, I did. Um, first of all, they will have to deal with. Uh, the consequences, the economic and financial consequences internally in China. Um, I mean, even there is the risk of a second uh, wave of a pandemia. So, and, and, and they are, in a way, with their present uh, wolf warrior diplomacy, this megaphone diplomacy, I mean, this is getting pushback. And uh, a lot of countries are also starting to realize that Belt and Road is not all fun. And that it has a number of very negative aspects, including this debt trap. So um, I think there is also a growing realization uh, in Europe as well um, that not everything is fine, which is coming out of China, including the, I mean, they, they were trying to give assistance with this uh, masks and everything. Well, half of it didn't work. Uh, a number of others we had to pay for. Um, so we are also well realizing that um, we have to maybe not decouple our our um, uh, economy, but but uh, look very closely at dependencies and uh, make sure that we, for example, in the medical sphere, uh, pharmaceuticals, that we are no longer as dependent on China as we were. We're also to doing uh, going to do uh, investment screening. Uh, to look at the geopolitical strategic aspects of Chinese investments here in our infrastructure. So I think there is a growing realization that we, we will have to push back because uh, China is primarily saying win-win. I mean, they're working on the basis of Chinese interests and Chinese interests only and pushing their own norms and practices. Um, and, uh, well, we would like to to have um, as much as possible a united front in pushing back there.